uh, the gentlewoman from California, Congresswoman Spire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lady, for appearing before the committee and answering our questions. Let me just um, at the outset underscore something you've said now a couple of times today and once before at the hearing before the Financial Services Committee. And in one way or another you said AIG should return to its core uh, operations, to its knitting as you put it. Um, that would suggest that we should reinstate the Glass-Steagall Act, doesn't it? I'm, I'm not sure if we should go back to it, but we should sure have a very rigorous debate about whether we've whether what we've allowed to happen has gone too far. Well, you, by your own admission today, said you should never have been involved in derivatives. It was Glass-Steagall that gave you the opportunity to get involved in derivatives. Had you been just an old-fashioned insurance company with reserves that you had to maintain, none of this would have happened, correct? Uh, with respect to, to AIG and, and our insurance operations versus AIG, FP, correct. But I, I don't necessarily my response to you was meant to suggest I don't necessarily know that I would generalize from our situation to the overall uh, Glass-Steagall situation. All right, let's, um, let's kind of talk about where we are. When Secretary Paulson came before us, he said, we're going to get all of our money back from AIG. In fact, we'll make money. We, go, we spent a lot of time around here talking about a 79 percent interest that we own AIG, except for the fact that we have no say. And that's the big problem. The taxpayers are absolutely apoplectic about the fact that there are hundreds of bonuses of a million dollars or more given to AIG employees who brought this company down, and the taxpayers are picking up the tab. Now, my question to you is, on the heels of what um, the, the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa, asked earlier, can we really ever expect that the taxpayers are going to be repaid? I mean, if in fact you're talking about $70 billion in TARP money, another $50 billion uh, that we paid for Maiden Lane, another $60 billion in a loan uh, from the Fed, and you're worth $5 billion, I mean, we've all got to be scratching our heads. How can you possibly repay the taxpayers? Well, the $5 billion is what's worth after you've sold many of the good assets and paid off many of your liabilities, including the Federal Reserve and all the other debt that we have. So some of the businesses that I've mentioned in the course of our discussion today, a business like AIA, it's probably got a value of $25 billion. Uh, a business like Alico, it probably has a business of a value of 18. Our property casualty business has a book value of 35 or $38 billion. So you just keep going down the list, and there's, there's great opportunity for the taxpayer to be repaid. But sorry to be repetitive, it's very much a function of what happens to the economy and what happens to the capital markets. How much did uh, the financial products unit pay in taxes, or did it pay anything in taxes since it, since it was located in London? Yeah, the taxes would have been, their earnings would have been added in with all the other earnings of the businesses that comprise AIG to get an aggregate number, and we would have paid taxes to the appropriate jurisdiction on that aggregate number. So I, if, if, it's, if that's important to you, we'll, we'll get you the number in terms of what we've paid in taxes over the last couple of years, but AIGFP would have just been a, been a piece of it. But if it was located in London, I mean, it could have been a tax haven for AIG, could it not? And all of the profits just retained in AIGFP and not brought back to the United States and therefore taxes not paid on it? Yeah, it would depend upon where those taxes were recognized. And, and as we sit here right now, I, I just don't have the would answer to that. you report back to the committee on precisely mm -hmm. how much AIG paid in total in taxes and then if, in fact, mm -hmm. AIGFP um, paid any taxes at all? The GAO uh, recently came out with a report in April recommending that all the contracts be renegotiated regarding uh, executive compensation at AIG uh, if and when the $30 billion was sought by AIG. I um, presume you've seen that report, and I'd like you to comment on it. You know, we are trying to do that in many cases, uh, particularly with respect to FP. We're going back to the contractual arrangements that were entered into at the end of 07, beginning of 08. They call for retention payments in 2010. We are working now to restructure those payments to make them more 
performance oriented. We're going to comply with whatever the rules and regulations are that come out when the Treasury promulgates them. And I guess my final question, although my time is now up, I will yield back. Thank you very much. Uh, we're not going to have a second round, but if you have a question, I will recognize you to uh, ask your question. Yeah, yeah. Congressman Kucinich. 